In ZBrush 4R8, there is a new Chisel 3D brush that has, it just comes by default, and it uses 3D alphas. Now what these do, or vector displacement maps, it allows you to pull out topology from existing topology with overhangs and indentions and everything. It's very cool. So there you can see the nose has indentions. Creation of this is actually pretty easy. It's just not intuitive. So let's go ahead and go over that really quickly so you can see how that's done. So I'm just going to go ahead and either take this chisel, the chisel 3D, or the standard brush, clone that so I don't replace it, and I'm going to go ahead and append a plain 3D. It has to be a ZBrush plain 3D in order for it to work. Otherwise, it's not going to uh, create a vector displacement map. So you can increase the subdivision. You can sculpt on it, but you cannot remesh it or dynamesh, excuse me, or use Boolean operations. I'm going to go ahead and just pull this out here so you can see it has an overhang. Now I'd never, I'd never try and change the sides here because that's basically zero on the alpha. If I go ahead and go here and go create multi alpha mesh, you can see it creates anything from the subtools, but you also see it has a sphere. The sphere you can delete by just going, um, excuse me, sorry, you can do it individually from mesh or you can delete it down there on the delete mesh or you can just go ahead and do the create multi alpha mesh after deleting the sphere and it works just fine so let's go ahead and test this out so i'll just go to the sphere here pull that out you can see it pulls out just fine now if we had left that met that sphere it would have been an alpha but it would have just been your typical alpha i've created a lot of different um, scales that we're going to be using you can see that the edges are sharp and clean and the scales do have overhang and and some some places so it's going to be interesting. Here we have a tongue. The tongue doesn't actually work very well because the, the topology is stretched so much. Uh, but I want to show you kind of how that works. So I'm going to go ahead and just take this one and append it to what we have. So, oh, before I do that, I want to show you this, sorry, really fast. Right here, if you ever have this kind of skewed like this, it's going to give your alpha a lot of strange overhangs and it's not what you want. So I can go ahead and mask that. In deformations, you can go to morph to grid and you can see it just moves it right back to where it's supposed to be. Doesn't affect the topology, everything is clean and it's what you want. So I can take all these sub tools or I can do it individually. So I'm going to grab my chisel 3D brush I made and I'm just going to go ahead and go brush from mesh and you can see it will just append that one individual thing from mesh. Now if I go ahead and go brush copy meshes, it'll copy all the current alphas. Okay, so I'll go ahead and do that now. Copy meshes and you see some more options are, are taken. I'm going to create a multi alpha brush here and it deletes everything. So if I want those things back, I could go paste append and you can see that I get those back. So now I have all these different uh, vector displacement maps. I can go and start playing around with these on the sphere. And you can see how this is very useful compared to just your typical alphas. I can go underneath geometry. I can go above geometry. I can pull out, create some underhangs, uh, create some really cool looking scales here. And if you actually want, you could, with very little modifications, just make this kind of a leaf, a leaf alpha and you would have almost a stylized bush that we would be making right now. You can change the intensity and it makes it so it's less strong, obviously, so all of these options still work. The alpha options do not, but you can, so you can't really affect it that way. Just, but the intensity and the Z intensity and the stroke all do affect these. Now, as you see, I can pull this out and you can see the deformation on the tongue itself. It does have some strange uh, geometry going on. So anything that's like an appendage or something that stretches out far really isn't good. Scales, hair, things like that, awesome. Now I'm going to go ahead, I have a couple sticks and rocks already made, and I'm going to go ahead and take this and copy the meshes and then, you know what, actually I'm just going to create an alpha mesh. I don't need those anymore, but I could have appended that if I want to. So you can see I have all this, but these are not vector displacement maps. It's a good vector. But as I pull that, you can see that it doesn't have overhang. It doesn't have anything cool like that. If you want overhang, you have to be able to start with a, a plain 3D. Now with these, what is cool is it is a repository of different alphas. So as I go through here, I can change my 
my out my z intensity and you can see that it's creating a cool kind of ground cover this is only three models uh, imagine just creating a repository of like 25 different alphas that you use on a common basis and they're they're all there you can delete them you can you can append them you can just make different things and grow basically your brush to what you want it to be so right there you saw that i just deleted one and here i'll just pull out some more now I do want to show you one last thing, okay? You can take an alpha, go to brush, and then instead of from mesh, you can go to mesh. And it, how cool is that? It actually creates something that could be a base for a base for your vector displacement map. You can see right there, that's looking pretty cool. And there's some options that you can play around too so that it's not it doesn't look exactly like that if you don't want it to. So for example, let me find this really fast. Uh, it's alpha, make 3D, and you can do double-sided or not. You can make it 3D or not. And so this is not double-sided, and you can see it makes it into a mesh. The other one doesn't make it into a mesh along the same lines. It's actually making it uh, into something that can be a vector displacement map. Yeah, it's still a mesh, but this one is more of your generic mesh. So if you want a rock that's double-sided, you could go double-sided and make it, and it would have basically your rock. It's pretty cool. So that's it for this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, well, that's okay too. Thanks.